In this short video, we're going to do some examples where you calculate the critical numbers of a function. Recall that a critical number of a function f is a number c in the domain of f where either f prime of c equals 0 or f prime of c is not defined. So in our first example, we're going to try to find the critical numbers of g of x equals 2x minus 3x raised to the power of 2 over 3. So we're going to first examine the domain. This function has 2x, so any real number can be put in the place of x in that term, and then minus 3x to the power of two-thirds. Well, x to the two-thirds is the same as the cube root of x squared. And so again, we can put any real number in the place of x in that expression, and it will be defined. So the domain of this function g is all real numbers. So taking the derivative, I'll just use the power rule. I'll get 2 minus 2 thirds times 3 x to the power of negative one third, which I will rewrite as two minus two over x to the power of one third. And I'd like to set that equal to zero. But before I solve this equation, I want to make note of the fact that now I have an x in the denominator. So g prime is not defined when x equals 0. So without doing any solving, I can say that x equals 0 is a critical number of g. So now let's go back and solve this equation. I'll get 2 equals 2 over x to the 1 third power, which means 2x to the 1 third power equals 2. And that leads to x equaling 1. So I have two critical numbers, x equals 0 and x equals 1. In the next example, we'd like to find all critical numbers of the polynomial f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5. The derivative is just 3x squared minus 12x. I'll set that equal to 0. And I can solve that by factoring. And I'll get two critical numbers, x equals 0 or x equals 4. Our last example asks us to find all critical numbers of h of t, which is the absolute value of sine of t. So let's think about that. We're find, taking sine of t and then the absolute value. So that means that h of t is going to be sine of t if t is in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. And the reason for that is because sine of t is positive in q1 and in q2. And then h of t will be minus sine of t if t is in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant. And that's because sine of t is negative in those quadrants. And the absolute value means we have to change the sign to make it positive. All right, so let's look at what the graph would be. Any part of the graph which has negative y coordinates, that is any part of the graph which is below the x-axis, is going to get reflected in the x-axis and now be above the x-axis. So this yellow line now is my graph of y equals the absolute value of sine of t. And I can see that I'm going to have 
a lot of critical numbers because all of these values here, all of the x values where I have a local maximum, those will be critical numbers. And then all of these values where I have a cusp, the arc comes down, there's a sharp corner, and then a new arc starts. All of those will also be critical numbers because the derivative at those cusps will not exist. So let's find what values of t are the critical numbers. Well, I can go ahead and use this formula for h and take the derivative. I'll get h prime of t is going to be cosine of t when t is in the first or second quadrant and negative cosine of t when t is in the third or the fourth quadrant. And so in either case, if I set that equal to zero, I want cosine of t equal to zero and that'll occur at any value of t, which is pi over two plus an integer multiple of pi. And we have these cusps at all the integer multiples of pi. So if I put those together, so I've got critical numbers here at the integer multiples of pi, but I also have the critical numbers at pi over two plus an integer multiple of pi. So I can summarize that as being just pi over two times k, where k is an integer, any integer multiple of pi over two. 